Hey guys, I'm Edward here at Thomas Jefferson High School where students are inside putting the finishing touches on a group effort six weeks in the making. It started with this, a bin of assorted metal computer parts, tubes, and wires. The task at hand? Create a robot capable of performing a specific task. Sounds easy. No way! This is our 10th year at the robotics competition here at Thomas Jefferson High School. And we're going to put all of our tools and equipment over here, get the robot on this table, and let's make it happen. I think it's a way to pull together all the engineering skills, writing skills, and everyday school classroom skills into an after-school program and into a real hands-on working program. Kids design a robot from scratch. They have to write an engineering document. They come up with a research paper. They have to create displays for their robot. They have to create t-shirts. And they have to motivate other students and people in the community to come out and see their robot and get them interested in robotics and engineering. Each year in the Dallas Best Competition, the robot's function is tied to an element of science. This year it's DNA, and the rules for the competition are very specific. The robot can be no wider than two feet. The weight of the robot must be less than 24 pounds. The robot must be no taller than two feet. The robot must pick up balls this size and drop them into a scoring bin. The students here are very dedicated. We work for six weeks straight, Monday through Friday, and three Saturdays as well. Teamwork is very important. I mean, you gotta, like, talk to everyone, make sure they know what they're doing, you gotta make sure you know what you're doing. Great, everything's pretty much finished. We're just waiting on a couple of next things and we'll be ready to go. So, looking forward to the competition on Saturday? Oh yeah. Why? I've never been to one, so uh, I'm pretty excited, you know, I want to see how it is and I'm pretty excited, you know, I hope we win. Well now that the last screw has been tightened and everything has been tested thoroughly, Thomas Jefferson's robot, the destroyer of the new age, is ready to take on the competition. You hear the noise of the basketball type stadium, you hear, you hear the, the music pounding, you hear the buzzer sound, um, all of the stuff is just so exciting. The atmosphere right now is just, wow, I'm nervous, I'm excited, I'm, there's every possible feeling I can have right now, I, I've got it. They're all butterflies, but boy, when, they, when that sound off starts, those kids are in there and ready to roll. Yeah. Alright, let's go dude. Oh, it's a, a group effort and everybody ends up just working together like a family. Yahoo! It's like we, we just become so close. Get yourself plug in, make sure you got control. Alright. I made a lot of friends doing this. Just coming in here gives me a life lesson. You meet a lot of new people, you make friends. Just a lot of fun. You guys ready? ready? Hands down, a great effort by everyone involved. And team members here at TJ are already talking about how they're going to do next year at Dallas Best. For Schools on Dallas, I'm Edward.
what's going on you guys? My name is Daryl and we're here where it all happens. Behind the scenes in the control room of Calculate This. Thanks for watching today's show and we're just about ready to get started. But first, we're going to go ahead and cover a few simple ground rules. And so we'll head over to my man Ivan for more. Okay, good luck on your problem. Okay, ground rules. Let's see. Number one, you have to call in. Pick up the phone, give us a ring, touch the dial. I mean, we want to hear from you. And we get awfully bored just sitting around doing nothing. So call in and be a part of the show. The number is 972-925-3123. Take a picture, write it down, just give us a call. Number two, when you do call in, step away from the television. It really hurts our ears and it sends off a really bad tone. See what I mean? So, when you call in, step away from the television. I thank you, our hosts thank you, and our ears definitely thank you. And another thing, when calling into the show, please do not use cell phones. Cell phones do not work too well with our audio system here in the studio. They give off a really bad signal and we have a hard time hearing what you're saying. So remember, no cell phones. Another thing that we want all of you out there watching to know is that you could be on TV. That's right, your face could be on the tube. Send us a picture, whether it be an individual photo or a photo of your entire class. We'd love to see you, and so would everyone else out there watching. Either mail it to us through interdepartmental mail at DISD Box 379, or drop us a line at calculate this at DallasISD.org. Well, it looks like it's just about time for the show to get started, so I have to say goodbye. But don't forget to call in for your chance to win all sorts of cool prizes. So get set for an all new edition of Calculate This! Jocelyn Hepburn, lead math teacher for the Dallas Independent School District. Hi, I'm Jimmy Gay, and I'm a lead math teacher coach for DISD. Oh, and you should call in today right for that. a chance to win a prize. Good luck. The number to call is 972-925-3123. So let's get started. Before we get started, also for all of our viewers who Anyone? are experiencing Anyone? audio difficulties, please turn your televisions to channel 12B, okay? That might clear up some of the problems. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue with our review of the tax release test. And this week we're going to talk about tax objective four and five. And do we have a caller? Well, we do we have a first me. caller here. Oh, good. Okay, this is Myra from uh, Hood Middle School. Myra? Hi. 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 Myra, how are you? Hi. What grade are you in, Myra? Seventh. Seventh grade. Who's, your, who's in the room with you, Myra? Mr. Baxter, Mr. Trammell. Okay, Mr. Oh, Baxter, hey, Mr. Mr. Baxter, Mr. Trammell, how y'all doing? Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay, okay Myra, uh -huh. we have a problem on, on objective four. Okay, Myra, let's read your problem. It says, <laughs> Mr. Williams built a wooden storage box. The storage box was three and a half feet high by two feet wide by two feet long. What is the volume of the storage box in cubic feet, Myra? And before we start solving that, Myra, let's look at text 7.9a and read that out loud so that everybody will know what we're doing here, what we expected to do. The student solves application problems involving estimation and measurement. The student is expected to estimate measurements and also application problems involving length, and that includes perimeter and circumference, area and volume. Okay, Myra? Uh, Myra? Okay. All right. Okay, Myra, uh, first let's underline some, some key information in this problem. What do you think we need to underline? Um, 3.5. Okay, 3.5 feet what? Three high. Okay, so that's the height. What else? Two feet um, wide by two feet long. Okay, and what is it we're trying to find? The volume. 
Now, do you have your uh, formula chart with you by any chance? Yes. Good, good. Tell me what is the formula for volume of, what kind of, what kind of figure is this? What's another name for a box? Rectangular prism. A rectangular prism. And so what is the formula for volume of a rectangular prism? Left times width times height. Okay, very good. Let me get a better pen here because this one's kind of going out on me. Now what did they say the length of this thing was? Two. Okay, two feet long. What did they say the width was? Two. Okay, and what is the height? Three. Is it three? Um, 3.5. 3.5 or 3 and 5 tenths, okay? So let's multiply. What's two times two? Four. And then four times 3.5, do you know how to do that in your head? I don't either. So let's go over here and do it over here. 3.5 times 4. What's 4 times 5? Um, 20. 4 times 3? 12. Plus 2 more? 14. Where am I going to put my decimal point? Mm, between the, the 1 and the 4. Okay, let's, let's talk about how we know how to put, where to put the decimal point. When in multiplication, you look at your two factors and you look to see how many numbers are behind the decimal point in this first one. How many numbers are behind the decimal? One. Okay, how many are behind the decimal in this one? Zero. And so that tells me how many numbers are going to be the total number that are going to be behind the decimal in my answer. So where am I going to put the decimal point? Between the four and the zero. Between the four and the zero. Very good. Now, I don't think I have any grids with me. Oh. My printer was running a little too slow today, so I didn't get to print a new one out. I don't think I have one in this stack. But anyway, we know that we put that in the grid in front of that decimal point. But this is 14 what? 14 what? What kind of units? What kind of units? Um, feet. Feet what? We're talking about volume. Feet square. Mm -hmm. Feet what? Feet. Feet cubed. Okay? It's cubic feet. Now, do you know why it's a three and not a two? No. Because when you're multiplying, when you're multiplying that length times that width times that height, you're also multiplying feet times feet times feet. I'll tell you what, I, I think I'm eventually going to find a pen that writes. Oh. Hopefully. So if I were multiplying feet times feet times feet, that gives me cubic feet. Just like 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the third power because there's 3 of them. 5 times 5 times 5 is 5 to the third power because there's three of them. Well, feet times feet times feet is feet to the third power. So it's going to be 14 cubic feet, okay? okay. And that's why volume is always cubic, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank Ma you so much for calling, Myra. Okay. Thanks a lot, Myra. Did, did a great an excellent job. job. Yeah. Okay, okay I think yeah, we do. Who oh, we do? Uh, is Isaiah here? Yeah. Hi, Isaiah. Hi. And what grade are you in? Eight. Oh, good. That's great. Good. What school are you calling from, Isaiah? W.H. Atwell. All right, Atwell. Michael Atwell. And who's in the room with you? Mr. Denise. Oh, Mr. Nisi. Hey, Hi, Mr. Nisi. Hey, Mr. Nisi. They love that. Yeah, they yeah. love Mr. Nisi. You know what? I'm going to get this one actually is from Objective 1. Okay. And this was one that I meant to get to when we did Objective 1, and I did because I like <laughs> everything Man. that's in this problem. And I know you're from Atwell, and I know, you know, so that means you're real sharp, right? Yeah. So I know you can handle this. I uh, really like what, what all is entailed in this problem. I bet he can. All right, let's read your problem, Isaiah. It says, Ray's recipe for lemon-lime punch calls for the following ingredients. One quart of apple juice, 
two and three-fourths cups of lemon-lime soda, 64 ounces of pineapple juice, two quarts of cold water, and one-fourth cup of lemon juice. And then the question is, what is the smallest container that will hold all of the ingredients, okay? And before we start solving that, let's look at, this is text 8.2C. And let's see what 8.2C says. 8.2C says, the student is expected to evaluate a solution for reasonableness, okay? Okay. All right. Now, the reason I like this problem is because it has all of these different measurements, and we have to do some conversions. So we need our formula chart. Do you have your formula chart with you? No. Okay. Well, you're lucky because I have mine with me. <laughs> never leave home without it. <laughs> I never do. Okay. And so we're going to concentrate on this part of the formula chart with the customary measurements. And we're going to concentrate on... Now, if, let's look at our, our problem again first. And you'll see that you have all the different measurements. You have cups, you have ounces, you have quarts, and you have cups. Now, the answers are in quarts. But I found that it was easier for me if I'd converted everything to ounces and then went back and converted them to qu quarts, okay? Okay. So that's the way we're going to do it. Now, let's look at the formula chart. Oops, wrong part. And we see that one cup equals eight ounces. And the reason I went to ounces first is because I noticed half of them were in cups, and I can easily convert cups to ounces, okay? So one cup equals eight ounces, all right? So we're going we're gonna to write that on the side, because that's not the only one we're going to use, but we're going to write it on the side. So we'll remember that. And I'm going to convert these cups, here's cups here, and here's cups here. This one's already in ounces. Now, if one cup equals eight ounces, how many ounces are in two cups? Sixteen. Sixteen. So I'm going to put that little sixteen over here. And then I have three-fourths of a cup. So in other words, one cup is eight ounces. So I need to figure out how many fourths are in that eight. How many fourths do we have in eight? Two. Two fourths. How many fourths? Two. Well, we have four fourths, but, but one fourth. You, you're answering the question I meant to ask. The question I meant to ask is what would be one fourth of that? You answered the question I meant to ask. So one fourth would be two ounces. One fourth cup would be two ounces. Now we have three fourths. So if one fourth is two ounces, how many ounces are in three fourths cup? Six. Six. Okay, so we're going to add that six to the sixteen. Oops. And that gives us twenty two ounces here. Okay? We already have sixty four right there. Now we have a fourth of a cup we already said was two ounces. So that's two more ounces. Now, converting those quarts to ounces, you know what? I think what we can do is we can convert, we can do all the ounces and make them quarts and then start adding quarts. Let's do that, okay? okay. So we have uh, 22. This is different from the way I worked it, but I just realized this would be a little bit easier. We have 22 ounces, we have 64 ounces, and we have 2 ounces, okay? So that would be eight, 88 ounces. Now, if... 8 ounces equal 1 cup, 88 ounces are going to equal what? 88 ounces equal how many cups? Now if 8 ounces is 1, let's, let's do a proportion. 11. It's 11. Tell okay. me how you got 11. I divided 8. 8 into 88, exactly. So we have 11 cups. Now, we're going to go back to our formula chart. See, this is really far, but this problem was on one of the tax tests. So let's go back to cups. Now we have to convert from cups to quarts. And we see here that uh, one pint equals two cups, and, one, and two pints equals one quart. So we're going to have to go to pints, and then we're going to have to go to quarts. Does that make sense? Okay. So we have... 
11 cups and we said that two pints I'm sorry one pint equal two cups so how many pints can I get out of this if one pint is two cups how many can I get out of 11 cups Five point five pints. Okay. Okay. Right. Whew, this is getting complicated. Mm -hmm. Now, two pints equal a quart. So I have five point five pints, and all we need is an approximate. It says what is the smallest container, right? So I can really kind of leave off that point five and just look at the five pints. How many quarts can I get out of that? If if two pints equal one quart. How many quarts can I get out of five pints? Ten. Pints are smaller than the quarts, so I'm going to quarts now. So how many can I get out of that? Two point five. How, how many can I get out of that? Two. I can get two. Now I'm going to have a pint left over, but that's okay because all I want is the smallest container. I'm going to remember that I have an extra pint left and I also have an extra half of I actually have 1.5 pints left. So I got to get that in the container too. I'm just going to keep that in my memory bank. So I'm going to take these two, two quarts from all of those ounces we had. I'm going to add those two quarts plus these two quarts. That's four quarts plus one more quart is five quarts. But I have the extra pints left over and I want to get it in the container. So which one of these, what's the smallest container that I can use? Because I have five quarts and then I have a little extra. I have 1.5 pints still left. So what's the smallest container I can use? Could you repeat it? I, had, I ended up with a total of five. Do you remember how we uh, got the two quarts here? We yeah. added up all the ounces, right? Yeah. And we figured out out of all of those ounces, when we converted them to, to, pint, to uh, quarts, it ended up with two quarts. There it is right there. Okay? Okay. We also had some a little bit left over. We took that two quarts, added it here. So we have the two quarts. We added two more quarts. We added and then one more quart. So we had a total of five. Five quarts. Okay? That's how I got this number here. But I also had some pints left over. And I want to get it all in the, in the container. So what's the smallest container I can use? Can I use the four quart container to get all of the lemonade in there? No. Okay. What about the five quart? Yes. I can get all of it, the five quarts plus the 1.5 pints? No. No. So which one do I need to use? I need at least six quarts, right? A six quart container. Yeah. Because I have a little more than five quarts of lemonade. A lemon lime punch, I think it was. Right? Yeah. Do you understand? Uh-huh. Now, you, do I need to go back over anything? Because I know this was a very confusing problem, and that's why I wanted to make sure we got to it. Do I need to go back over anything? No, ma'am. I you, get it. Now. You get it? Okay, very good. Very wow. good. Very complicated it, problem. Yeah. Very complicated, and Isaiah did an excellent job. Great excellent job, job. Isaiah. This was an actual problem on the tax test a couple of years ago. Wow. Well, so that's we why the, this year. that formula chart is so important. Yes. I mean, you had to go back from one unit to another unit, yes. pints to quarts. Mm -hmm. So did a great job. That was a long problem. Yes, okay. and, and when I did it the first time, I, t I converted everything to ounces. And that might have been a little bit, of, bit easier after I tried doing it the other way. It might have been a little easier converting everything to ounces because on our formula chart, mm -hmm. well, it says how many ounces are in a gallon and it, then it tells us how many gallons are in a quart. Oh. So I could have just divided by four. I think it's what I ended up doing, dividing by four. Or uh, is that what I did? No, I didn't divide by four. I can't remember what I did. But anyway, I, I went to ounces, from ounces to gallons, and then gallons to quarts. I mean, yeah, that's what I did. Okay. That's I'll, what I did. I'll take your word. It was a, <laughs> something it was a like that. Something <laughs> like that. I, I probably multiplied is what I did. 
Okay. I think we have a new call, another caller on the okay, line. Okay, good, good. Is it Gazelle? Giselle. Giselle. Okay, I'm sorry. Giselle. And she's calling from Hood? Yes. What grade are you in, Giselle? Seventh. Seventh grade, okay. All right, great. Good. Yeah. I have a problem here. I can get to it. <laughs> I covered it up with all the work I was doing on that other problem. That's not it. Uh, here they are. Okay, I wanted my objective four okay. problems back. Who's your math teacher, Giz uh, Giselle? Mr. Trammell. Mr. Trammell. Oh, okay. good teacher, good yes. teacher. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the tax test? No. Ah, uh, we got two weeks. Okay. Well, I think you'll be ready in two mm -hmm. weeks, won't you? Yes. Okay, good, good. Still a lot of work and reviewing going yes. on, right? Okay, Giselle, let's read your problem. It says, Kira drew a circle with a radius of 20 inches and another circle with a radius of 10 inches. What is the approximate difference between the areas of the two circles? Okay, and this is text 7.9a and it's the same one. Okay, so were you listening earlier when we read that one, Giselle? Yes. Okay. And this one, you can't see it because it's red, but this has a radius of 10 centimeters. Okay? Now, we want to know the difference, approximate difference between the areas of the two circles. Okay? Uh -huh. And the reason it says approximate distance is because we use 3.14 for pi, and 3.14 is not actually pi. Pi is a non terminating, non repeating decimal. It's a decimal number that goes on and on and on forever. And we'd be forever and ever writing the number if we use the real uh, value of pi. Okay? Uh -huh. So that's why it says we want the approximate distance. Okay? Uh -huh. So we're going to use 3.14 for pi. Because I think if we use 3, I don't think we'll get the answer, uh, one of the answer choices. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, how do we find, do you have your formula chart with you? Yes. Good, oh, good. Great. What is the formula? I don't have to look for mine. What is the formula for area of a circle? Uh, area equals pi r squared. Okay, pi r squared. Now, do you know what all that means? No. That means pi, we use 3.14 for pi, times the radius, and we already said what the radius was in both uh, circles, and then we square that radius. Okay? So whatever the radius is, we square it, and then we multiply it by 3.14. So we're going to substitute. We're going to do the first circle first and substitute pi for 3.14. What did they say the radius of the small circle was? 10. 10 inches. So we're going to square that 10. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by square? When I say I'm going to square the 10, do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm going to multiply it by itself. 10 squared equals 10 times 10. You know, yeah, did you know watch on the first problem when I was showing them how we got feet cube, uh, cubic feet? It was because it was feet times feet times feet. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's, if it's square, that means I multiply two of them. Okay. 10 times 10. If it's cubed, that means I multiply three of them. Okay. okay? Uh -huh. So what is 10 squared or 10 times 10 equal to? 100. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply that by 3.14. Do you know how to do this in your head? 3.14 no. times 100? No. I'm going to show you a shortcut. If I multiply, and this only works when you're multiplying by powers of 10. What do I mean by powers of 10? I mean numbers like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. If I have, in other words, I have a 1 and some zeros. Also with the decimal numbers, but we're going to just talk about the whole numbers right now. And if I multiply by one of those numbers, then all I have to do is move my decimal point by how many zeros are in those numbers. Yeah. I have two zeros, so I can move my decimal point two spaces, and that gives me my answer. I'm going to multiply so I can prove to you that that's true. I don't know why I'm writing so slanted like that today. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice You're that? You're doing a good job. <laughs> Now, you know that if I'm multiplying like this, I can just bring those two zeros down, right? Yes. And then just say 1 times 4, 1 times 1, and 1 times 3. And we already talked about how to put the decimal. It's going to be two numbers behind the decimal. So, see, I get that same answer. That's the same as point zero zero. I can drop those zeros. Okay? Yes. Now, notice in my answer choices that they have that as one of the answers. 
Hmm. But did it ask what was the uh, vo the uh, area of that circle? Is that what the question was? No. no. What was the question? It said, what is the difference between the areas of the two circles? Mm -hmm. So I have to find the area of this circle also. Okay? Yeah. Same formula. Now tell me what I'm going to write when I find the formula of this circle. Excuse me? Tell me what to write. I want to find the area of the big circle. It has a radius of 20. So tell me what to write. What do I write for pi? 3.14. 3.14. And what is the radius? 20. And what do I do to that radius? Square. I square mm -hmm. it. Okay. Yeah. Now what does 20 square mean? Uh, what does that mean? 20 times 20. 20 times 20. Very good. Okay, so it's 3.14. Do you know what 20 times 20 is in your head? No. Okay, let me show you another shortcut. I have a zero here and a zero there. I can just bring those down and say 2 times 2 is 4. Mm -hmm. And it's 400. Let me prove that to you. See, I'm going to say 0, 0. Then I'm going to put a zero down and say 2 times 0 2 times 2, and I get 400. But the shortcut is, if I have those zeros, I just bring those down. Zeros at the end. Doesn't work if they're in the middle of a number. The zeros at the end, I can just bring those down and then just multiply the numbers. Okay? You kind of like that? Yeah. See, anytime I can find a shortcut, I try to find the shortcut. So that's 400. And then I'm going to say uh, 3.14 times 400. Now, this isn't a power of 10, so I can't just move the decimal point. I can actually, I could put the zeros down and multiply the 4, but I don't want to confuse you. So we're going to go ahead and do the multiplication if I can find some room on here. 3.14 <laughs> times, what was it, 400. 400. Uh. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my two zeros down and then just say 4 times 4 is what? 4 times 4. 16. Okay, put my 6, carry my 1. 4 times 1. 4. Plus one more. Five. And then four times three. Four times three is? Twelve. Twelve. And then I'm going to put my decimal point where? Oh. I don't want that to look like a decimal. Mm -hmm. How many numbers are behind my decimal in my problem? Two. So where does my decimal need to go? Between what? The six and the zero. Between yeah. the six and the zero. So I can drop those two zeros at the end, right? And I can just put 1,256. Now, question is, oh, there's, there's, my, there's an answer right there. Oh. Am I going to just circle that one? No. And do you see how they do? Yeah. They always do that. Let me tell you, they always do that. Let me tell you how they got this top number. Because they think some students are going to say 20 minus 10 and then just say 10 times the 3.14 and think that 300 is the right answer. But the question is, what is the difference between the areas? Now, the area of the first one was 314 square inches. The area of the second one was 1,256 square inches. Now, when it says difference, what does that tell me to do? Subtract. Subtract. And I'm going to subtract in this circle because that's the only space I have left. 1,256 minus 314. Okay, 6 minus 4? 3. 6 minus 4 is? Oh, 2. 2, okay. 5 minus 1 is? 4. And 12 minus 3 is? Um, 9. 9. And if you need to count on your head, you know mm -hmm. I used to tell my students, Jimmy, if you need to count on your hands, count on your hands. Exactly. All I want is for you to get the right answer. Mm -hmm. Eventually, when you count on your hands enough, you'll get away from counting on your hands. Yes. That's the way I always looked at it. So my answer is 942 square inches. Now, that was a lengthy problem. Yes. And you know what? Those uh, measurement problems are going to be lengthy. They're going to take some time. So when you're getting to those problems on the tax test, take the time that you need to do those problems. Even if you need to wait and go back to that problem, which I don't usually like to tell students to skip any problems because then they'll forget to go back to them. Exactly, yeah. But if you feel like it's taking too much time, you're not quite understanding, 
then go back to it. Just make sure you keep your place on the answer sheet, okay? okay. Uh -huh. And so that you don't get stressed by one problem and then all, you give up on the rest of them. Do you see, see what I'm saying? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Giselle, okay. do you see the, the way that she wrote on that problem on your screen? I mean, don't be afraid to write on it. That's she right. wrote everything that you told her to write on it. Look at how it looks. But the answer Look she has is the correct answer. So, you know, uh, students get into the habit of writing it out. Don't be afraid to work the problem all the way through. Work the problem out. And even though I knew the shortcuts, I wanted to make sure you got it right. So I took the time to work it out. Okay? All right. I want you to take your time. I want the students to do so well on this test. I just, I really do. Yes, I just hope that really the, that DISD that. makes mm -hmm. the best scores in the state. I just I really want so. that. So bad, I want yeah? that. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you so much, Giselle. <laughs> that was a hard problem, and you did an excellent job. On yes. It. All right. We do have another call. We're oh, waiting good. patiently for us. It's yeah, La Brittany. Yeah, she's been very patient. Hello, La Brittany. LaBrittany, are you close to your uh, television screen? Because we're getting a little feedback noise here. Can you move back just a little from the screen? It's Macy Fix the TV. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, oh. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's blame Mr. Macy for that one. Uh, LaBrittany, what grade are you in? I <laughs> can That was a good one. <laughs> what grade are you in, LaBrittany? Eighth. 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 Good, okay. good, good. Okay. Brittany, I have a problem for you. I see. I think I want to do a different problem. La Brittany, who is your math like teacher, by the way? One. Mr. Nisi. Mr. Nisi is. Okay, great. Oh, good. Nisi this should this should be a piece of cake for you mm -hmm. then. Okay, let's read your problem. It says Jonathan shipped a birthday gift to his grandmother in a cubicle box. And you see the graphics there, which are nice. And then it says, which is the closest to the surface area of the box? And this is text 8.8C. And let's just read through that, little Brittany, before, we answer, before you okay. solve this one. 8.8C uh, says, the student is expected to estimate answers and use formulas to solve application problems involving surface area and volume. OK? OK, now this time, little Brittany, we're finding the surface area. Okay, mm -hmm. tell me about that. What do we mean when we say find the surface area of something? What do you say? What does that mean? When you say find the surface area, what are we talking about? <laughs> the area of the whole uh, thing. That's absolutely mm -hmm. right. I'm looking for the area, the sum of the areas of all of the faces. Now, there is a formula for that on your formula chart, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken. You have your formula chart there? Uh-huh. Okay, oh, wow. good, good. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find it on mine. <laughs> that must be the seventh grade one. Yes. Okay, let's see. Well, just read your formula because I can't find that part. Can you read your formula? What does it say about what? surface? What is the formula for surface area? Here it is. I found it. Okay. Uh, of a okay. cube. Because this is, remember it says it's a cubicle box. So that means it is a cube. Cubicle is a form of the word cube. What is the formula for surface area of a cube? S, e, S equals 6 S to the second power. Okay, absolutely right. S equals 6 S to the second power. Now what does it mean by S to the second power? Oops. S to the second power. Tell me what that means. Two, two, uh, two and by two. I can't hear you. When it says S, first of all, what does the S mean? What does S stand for? Square. The S so stands for side, did you say? Is that what you said? Side. Side, okay, so it means side squared. What do I mean by side squared? It's times by itself, times to six. Absolutely. Now, it's a cube. What is the length of, of, tell me about a cube first. What is it? Tell me about a cube. What, tell me, what do you know it about a cube? It has six sides. It has six okay, sides. Good. Very good. What else? And it, it's all equal. All the sides are equal. And what are the faces? What's the shape of all the faces? Square. They're made up of, of six squares. Six sides. All of them are squares, which means that all of the sides are equal. So if I know the side of one, the, uh, the length of one side, 
then I know the length of all the sides, right? Mm -hmm. And the picture tells me right here that all the sides are what length? 2.5. 2.5 feet. Very good. So I'm going to multiply 6 times 2.5 squared. Now notice how I used my formula and then I filled in the numbers. And you know what? I encourage students, write that formula on the test. Don't, you know, a lot of y'all don't even pick up the formula chart, but I'm going to encourage you to pick it up this year. And when you pick it up, write the formula on the ch test so you don't get confused and you're looking at the wrong formula. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. what are we going to solve first in this problem? We're going to solve two. Are we going to solve the uh, two times 2.5 by itself. Okay, 2.5 times 2.5. Very good. Do you know what that is in your head? Because I don't. 25. It's what? 6.25. Oh. Oh, well, I guess you do. <laughs> okay. So it's 6 <laughs> times 6.25. Yeah, it absolutely is. Because Now tell me how you got that so fast in your head. I multiplied. Oh. In your head? Yeah. Oh, you knew what 25 times 25 was? Right? Yeah. And what? 25 times 25 is what? 25 times 25. Oh, it's 625. It's 625, okay. and then yeah. you just move the decimal point. I want to make sure all of the students understand why you got right. that. She knew that 25 times 25 was 625, and then all she had to do was count how many numbers were behind the decimal and put her decimal. So that's how she was able to do that, right? Uh-huh. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. Excellent now, let's strategy. Multiply. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It saves some time. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's multiply the 6.25 times 6. 5 times 6? The answer is 37.5. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? The answer is 37.5. Okay, I'm going too slow mm -hmm. for her. Okay. Brittany has 37. it already. <laughs> <laughs> and it says which is closest <laughs> to the surface area of the box, and which one is closest? D. Answer D. Uh, Very good. Great job, LaBrittany. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much okay. for calling, LaBrittany. All right. Oh, I love students when they I get them too. right in, they have confidence, and yes. that's really great. I should, hey, she didn't need me to work that out. No. She knew. She was ahead of you. She, I, I see. Ahead Jimmy, of both Jimmy's of us. He's rubbing it in now, LaBrittany. He's rubbing it okay, in. Okay, we do have another caller. We have Laura on the line. Laura? Hello, Laura. Laura's a little shy. Hi. Hi, oh, Laura. Hi. <laughs> what How grade are you, are you in, Laura? Seventh grader, wh who's your teacher, your math teacher? Mr. Trammell. Mr. Trammell, okay. Okay, good, good, okay. good. Okay, Laura, let me find a seventh grade problem. Oh, this is a good one. This is a oh, good one. Good. You know, well, that one's, let's see. Uh, let's do this next one. Okay. Because we've done one on a circle. I, I'm trying to get as many different <coughs> types of problems in as we can today. Mm -hmm. Because you do know that this is our last show for the year. Um, yeah. Just heartbroken there. I and sad am. because I this really is the last am. show. This is the last show. And we just love this so much. Yes, we do. Okay. All right, Laura. I like your graphics here on your problem. And it says, Cassie draws the following four figures. And if you notice there, you have those four figures. Uh, what types of figures are those, Laura? Can you tell us? What is that first one? A rectangle, and what is this one? Triangle. Trapezoid. Good. Tra good. And a All right, good. great. And if you notice, each one of those is labeled <coughs> at the bottom. Figure one is the uh, rectangle. Figure two is the triangle. Figure three is the trapezoid that you said, and figure four is the circle. Okay. And then the question says, uh, which two figures have the same area? Okay. And this is. 7.9a. It's like 7.9a, and we did right. mention that already, okay? Okay. Now, what I like about this problem, and this was actually on a tax test, is that you have to find the figure, the figure, the area of all four of these figures. So you really have to use that formula chart. Now, the first figure is a, is a rectangle. I want you to look at your formula chart and tell me what the formula for finding area of a rectangle is. A equals length times width. Okay. And what is the length of this figure? 6 centimeters. Okay, and what is the width? 10 centimeters. So what is the area of this one? 60 centimeters. Centimeters what? Square. Okay, square centimeters or centimeters squared. Very good. Now, let's go to the next one. Look at your formula chart. Give me the formula for area of a triangle. 
And I think it has two different formulas on there. Tell me which one you want to use. Area equals half base and height. Okay, it says or. What's the second one? Area equals base and height divided by two. Okay, which one do you want to use? The second one. This, I figured you probably did. That's why I thought I'd better t tell you that there were two. Okay, base times height divided by two. I need a little room on this one. What is the base of this triangle? 10 centimeters. Okay, and what is the uh, height? 12.5 centimeters. 12.5, and we're going to divide that by two. Were you uh, listening when I told them the easy way when you're multiplying by a power of 10 to do that multiplication in your head? So tell me what 10 times 12.5 is going to be. How many spaces am I going to move that decimal? One. One space, and I'm just going to move it one space to the right. So it's 125. Now, if it were a decimal number, I would be moving the space, the decimal to the left, those, that number of zeros. But we don't have any decimal numbers. We don't have to worry about that. So it's 125 divided by 2. Uh, do you know that in your, in, in your head, or do we need to do the multiplication? I mean the division. The division. Okay, I, I was thinking that too. Okay, so 2 into 12? 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Bring down the 5. It's 2 into 5? 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Now, when I have something left over, what do I do? Add a 0. Okay, I add a decimal and a 0 and bring it down. And then I have to bring that decimal up here. 2 into 10? 5. So the area of this one is 62 and 5 tenths square centimeters. Okay, is that the same as the first one? No. No, it isn't. Okay, let's go to the third one. Look on your formula chart. Tell me the formula for area of a trapezoid. Area equals half base, base 1 plus base 2 height. Okay, does it give you two formulas? Yes. Give me the second formula. Area equals base 1 plus base 2 times height divided by 2. Which one do you want to use? The second one. Okay, I thought you might. So we have base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times the height. Okay? Now, uh, do you know what they mean by base 1 and base 2? That just means the two bases. You know, a base is what a figure sits on. Now, I could take this uh, trapezoid. Right now, it's sitting on this. I can turn, flip it upside down, and it could, would be sitting on this. So it's going to be the two parallel sides in your trapezoid, right? You know what parallel means, right? Yes. That the two lines don't meet. So the two parallel sides, even if that trapezoid is laying down, the two parallel sides are going to be your two bases. Okay? I want you to remember that. So we have base 1. I need some more room over here. Man, we're doing a lot of work today. So base 1 is what? 5 centimeters. And by the way, it doesn't matter which one of these I call base 1 and which one I call base 2. I could have called this one base 1. It didn't really matter. So base 2, if this is base 1, then this has to be base 2, which is what? 7 centimeters. Okay. And what is the height? 10 centimeters. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but it is 10. Now, let's go ahead and do the... Uh, uh, the top of the, the, the <laughs> fraction bar. I couldn't think of what I was. My, my, my mind drew a blank. I'm going to come out this way. What's 5 plus 7? 12. Then I'm going to do. Oh, I'm saying. Then I'm going to do 12 divided by 2. 6. And then 6 times 10. 60. So the, the uh, area of this one is 60 square centimeters. Now we're getting somewhere here. Hmm. Now we have a circle. Tell me the formula for area of a circle. Area equals pi r squared. Okay. Now r stands for what? Radius. Do they give us the radius? 10 centimeters. Is this the radius? Oh no. What is this? The circumference. The what? Diameter. It's the mm -hmm. diameter. Now, if the diameter is 10, what is the radius going to be? 5. 5. So I'm going to multiply 
3.14 times 5, and I'm going to square that. That's a 5 squared. I'm running out of room there. So 5 squared is what? 25. Okay, so it's 3.14 times 25. I'm going to try to find some room down here. 5 times 4? 20. 5 times 1? 5. Plus 2? 7. 5 times 3? 15. My zero. Two times four. Eight. Two times one. Two. Two times three. Six. Okay, that's kind of bunched up, but I can add that. That's zero. I'll go ahead and add it because it's kind of hard to see. Seven plus five is fifteen. Okay, that's five, six, seven, eight. So that's seventy-eight point five. So bunched up in there. So the area of this one is seventy-eight point five. I can drop that zero at the end square centimeters okay so we have the first figure is 60 square centimeters the second one is 62.5 square centimeters the third one is 60 square centimeters the fourth one is 78.5 square centimeters the question is wow. finally getting to it which two figures have the same area okay let's see figure one and figure two are they the same no. nope what about figure one and figure three Yes, they are. But we want to check and make sure there's not, they're not trying to trick us or something. What about two and, what is this, two and three? Are they the same? No. What about two and four? Are they the same? No. So the answer is what? B. You see what all we had to do just to answer that question? Laura, you worked today. Woo! Thank you. Yes, she did. <laughs> you, you did a great job, I tell you, that was too. a lengthy yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. But that was actually on the tax test. And you had to work every last one of those. I know I couldn't look at those figures and tell which two, just by looking at them, exactly. which two were going to have the same area. Mm -hmm. So students, please don't do that. Did an excellent job, Laura. Thanks a lot. Very good. Very mm -hmm. good. So I wonder if we have time for one more caller. We do. We have Rodney on the phone. Hello. Okay. Okay. Rodney? Yeah. What grade are you in? Eighth. Eighth grade. Okay. okay. Okay, Rodney, uh, who's your math teacher? Mr. Nisi. Mr. Nisi, oh, okay. All right, great. Okay, good, good. Okay, this is a volume problem. I'm trying to do as many different ones. We haven't okay. done anything in uh, Objective uh, 5 yet, so let's find something for Objective 5. All right, Rodney, we have your problem here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of small, but I think we can get through it. Okay. Rodney, a spinner and a fair number cube are used in a game. The spinner has an equal chance of landing on one of four colors, red, purple, blue, or green. Mm -hmm. The faces of the cube are labeled one through six. The question here is, what is the probability of a player spinning the color red and then rolling a five or a six? Okay. Mm -hmm. And before you get started, let's just read uh, text 8.11a. 8.11a says, <clears throat> the student is expected to find the probabilities of compound events, dependent and independent. All right, Rodney? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, Rodney, we have yes. two different things going on here. First, we have a number cube that we're rolling. You know what I mean by a number cube? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and it has the numbers 1 through 6 on it. And, of course, a number cube that has, uh, it's a cube, so it's equal sides. So it has an equal chance of getting the numbers 1 through 6, right? Yes, ma'am. Then you have a spinner. And this spinner, and I like the fact that the question did not have a picture. So if I were a student, the first thing I would do would be to draw that spinner. And it says that this spinner, uh, it says the spinner has an equal chance of landing on one of four colors. Red, purple, blue, and green. Now, I could have drawn the spinner mm -hmm. for you, but I want you to get in the habit of drawing what you need. When you, you know, I'm a visual person. I, I'm very visual, and most middle school students are visual also. So the first thing I do is I start drawing pictures to make sure I understand exactly what's being asked, okay? Yes, and even my, my little uh, number cubes here, mm -hmm. I did, you know, well, that this one has dots on it, but it mm -hmm. didn't have numbers on it. Looks so good. let's talk about the spinner first. On the spinner, we want to draw, we want to spin, rather, a red. What is the probability of me spinning a red on this spinner? One out of four. 
I have a one out of four chance of spinning a red, and I know that because it tells me that it has an equal chance. That's how I knew how to draw the spinner, because it told me that all the four sides, uh, four sections were the same size. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I have this number cube, and it has the numbers one through six. Now I want to get either a five or a six. First of all, what's the probability of getting a five? I mean, one six. Okay, you're getting a little ahead of me. You know the ultimate question I'm going to ask. What's the probability of getting a six? Two out of six. One out of six, right? Yes, ma'am. One yes, out of six for each number, but I have two of them, right? Yes, ma'am. So what's the probability going to be of getting either a five or a six? One three. Two out of six, very good, which, which is, and I like the way you I do too. Uh, reduced mm -hmm. that probability, that ratio, okay? Now, when we talk about compound probability, does it have uh, uh, the eighth grade? I'm not as familiar with the eighth grade formula chart. Do they have a formula on there for compound probability on your formula chart? No. No, it doesn't. No. So we have to remember. We have to remember that, uh, first of all, let me ask you this question. Is this going to be an independent event or, or, or a set of independent events or a set of dependent events? I want you to think about that question because we had two different, in the text it talked about two different types of events. It said it can either be an independent or a dependent event. Do you know what I mean by those two terms? It's an independent. Okay, tell me why it's independent. They're different. That's, okay. that's absolutely exactly. right. One of them does not depend on the other one. They're two mm -hmm. totally different things. And when we're talking about independent events, it doesn't necessarily always mean when I put the, the marble back. Sometimes it can be two separate or different events. I like the way you put that. So it's two totally different events, so they must be independent of each other. Mm -hmm. Okay? And how do we find the probability of independent events? One-fourth times one-third equals one over two. Okay. See, he's already ahead of mm -hmm. me. I'm talking too much. Equals, what did you say? One tw over one-twelve. Oh, one-twelve. One times one, four times three. Okay? And that is which, que which answer? I know it's kind of small. Answer okay. C. Thank you for zooming in. <laughs> what did he say? I said, thank you for zooming in. I couldn't see that. Oh, I know. I, yeah, okay. I knew it was kind of small. I couldn't get all the words on here. And I, yeah. so I said, well, I'll just have to zoom in and out on this one. Well, thank you so much for calling, Rodney. Thank Good you. job, Rodney. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, do we not have time for another caller? I think that's our last. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess that's all, all the, the time, time we, we have had. today. But before we go, what do we have to do, Jimmy? We have to give away this wonderful prize here. Okay, and who is the lucky person? Well, this lucky caller is us. caller number five, Laura from Hood. Oh, very good. Very good. good. Congratulations, Laura. Laura. Remember, we'd love to see you, so don't forget to bring pictures to your teacher so she can send them to us. Our email address is calculate this at dallasisd.org, or you can also send them through interdepartmental mail to DISD Box 379. Thank you for joining us today on Calculate Hasta This, vista, and baby. this is our last show, so we're <sighs> going to miss coming here and working problems out with you. You're the best students in the district. We believe that. And we know you're going to do well on the tax test. Yes, we do. And please, 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 we have two weeks. Spend those two weeks studying in the evenings. There's only so much your teachers can do. You're going to have to take it the rest of the way because when it comes down to the test, they're not going to be able to help you. So while they're helping you, go ahead and study at night so you don't forget from one day to the next exactly. what it is that they're going. They're working so hard uh, going over with you. Okay? Right. So we'll see you next year on... Calculate, Calculate this. this. Bye. Bye. Hasta la vista, baby. All right, we hope you've enjoyed today's edition of Calculate This. It's been a pleasure bringing it to you. And as a quick reminder, don't forget to send in photos of yourself and your class. We'd love to be able to show your face on television. 
Either mail it to us through interdepartmental mail at DISD Box 379 or drop us a line at calculate this at DallasISD.org. And if you'd like to find out more about the show, check out our website at www.dallasisd.org slash calculate this. For all of us here at Dallas Schools Television, I'm Daryl, and we'll see you next time on Calculate This. See you then.